Okay, so just before the series gets started, I just wanted to let you know. So this is going to be in multiple episodes because <laughs> there's almost four hours of footage from everything, including the galleries, the interviews, the round, um, the roundtable discussions. Plus, I have to. We have some other. Okay, I I I don't know how to say the word. <laughs> So, and they also still have some interviews left over to do, so we're going to have some everybody sending in their video and audio recordings as well. So this is going to be multi a multi-sode, multi-sode, multi-episode, multi-episode, not season because not quite on that track yet, but it's going to be pretty epic. So with this, we're starting off with, it's just going to be four episodes, but they're going to have multiple parts just so everything pairs with one another. So that way the conversation still flows, so each episode is a different theme. Just letting you guys know before we go this. So almost done editing and you'll see me in a little bit. But this is just before I upload it so you will see it happen. Yeah. Okay. We are here and we finally made it. And this is the fourth episode of Artist on Artist. This being at the artist residency at Chateau d'Orco, you have so many incredible individuals, all with their own minds, their own type of artistry, and their own ways of expressing and showing inspiration in their works and who they are as human beings. And with this being said, this allows us to dive into the minds of everyone and wonder exactly what's going on. How are they coming up with these incredible works? Now for the next few episodes of Artists Aren't Artists, it's going to be a little bit of a different layout, a little bit of a different structure. So we're going to start off with this first part where we have a roundtable discussion about one of the questions that were sent to us by one of our followers. And he had asked, in your profession, what is the worst advice you hear commonly given out? Now this is definitely something that is a fairly large topic because it is often a discussion that many people have no matter what profession you're in and whether it's about following or what the societal norms are within the art world versus what it is that you see as your job or what is your passion and it was wonderful having a roundtable discussion about this now part one of episode four because it's a roundtable discussion i didn't want to edit anything out i wanted to keep it raw that way you can get an idea of how everything flowed, everybody's thought pro thinking process, and how the conversation went about. Because they just it was able to guide into other different topics as well, still talking about the worst advice that was given to everybody. So let's have a listen and see what we all hear. In your profession, what is the worst advice you hear being commonly given out? <laughs> Who wants to jump? That? What profession are we talking about? Our individual professions. Yeah. What yeah. Oh, um, follow your passion because if you want to be an artist and a, a an art an artist with something to say, just following your passion is like saying following your feelings, and it rule and it doesn't include the hard work and the courage it takes to discipline yourself to practice every day and to paint or draw or sculpt or carve every day. Mm -hmm. That's true. I would also say, this like a long time, but like it leaves out the business end of this. It's like you have to think strategically in how you present yourself and your work and following your passion may not necessarily do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, getting your work out there is part of it. And if you just follow your passion, you haven't got means to get your work out for people to see that can be really difficult so yeah. just following your passion doesn't actually get your work out there for people to see so mm -hmm. you have to work out as you say the business side of it how am i going to get my work there okay. whether it's instagram galleries or whatever so you do have to mm -hmm. work hard at that 
I would say that there's a couple of things. So one would be um, that people often say, like, make worth is really different, like something that's never been seen before, and the idea that you have to sort of break, break art history, like do something completely different, um, instead of following what you actually should be doing in your practice, what your work should be, and instead of trying to do something that, like inventing a new way of making work, right? Instead of following what you really should be doing. And then I think similar to what you're saying, um, that people often talk about um, working when you feel inspired. And I think that that's a big mistake, and I think that's an amateur mistake often. Um, you know, that inspiration comes when you're working, not, you know, it's working and then inspiration, it's not the other way around. So I think that's um, a, maybe not advice, but a, a misconception about how, the, how that works. Um, I think when I was an undergrad, there were, I had a lot of, there was a misunderstanding or something where I thought that the professors were saying that everything I, that you make has to mean something, like that every, you have to know why that certain imagery, certain imagery is included in your piece. And I knew that I just had these urges or visions of certain things that needed to be in my work, but I couldn't explain a reason why. And so um, over time, I learned that I either misunderstood that or they told me that incorrectly, <laughs> something incorrectly, um, and that everything that you, you're painting, or since I'm a painter, I can use painting as an example, everything that you include kind of, if I can't, know, if I don't know what like the pink smoke in my painting means, I at least know what it means in the context of the whole painting. And so I think that you have to look at work as a whole instead of like taking apart, what does that mean in the painting? What does that mean in the painting? Because some things are literally symbolic and other things are just there to work with the whole thing. So I think that was something that I thought I had to do, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. really cool. And the narrative can come later. I think that when yeah, things are new good. to you, you don't know why you're doing it. And the and I agree, especially in academia, there's a pressure to be able to explain it, to fit it within, you know, theory and things like that, and to be able to say I'm doing this because of this and this symbolizes that. Um, but work, when work is new, you don't have narrative around it yet. Exactly. Um, and trust that the narrative will come after. You'll be able to make sense of it later. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, when it's new, you shouldn't have words to describe it yet. You shouldn't. Actually. You can. I think there. I, I think both. I think there are some people that have that can start with the content and they have this idea and they can follow through and make it. And then there are other people that have to have the material dictate and tell them what to what to do next. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it's a. For me, it's either either or. Um, but it's so liberating when you can deviate from your original idea, which is one of the big things that I think. What, when they say what's the difference between an illustrator mm -hmm. and yeah. a fine artist is that we kind of have a little more wiggle room to go away from the original idea um, than an illustrator doing a commission or something. Um, so, yeah, I, I really appreciate that <laughs> in my back. Jeff, the, the question was what was the worst advice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I feel like, for me, I'm, I'm always scanning for opportunities and ideas and, you know, but I'm like the the force, right? It's like, you know, an idea that I see might be a different idea than you see or that you see. So I'm always doing that thing and I'm open to hearing advice, but, and you can become better, but you really need to know the direction that you want to go in. So you need to know, you know, sometimes somebody might say a bunch of stuff that doesn't really make sense, but all of a sudden they might say just a little something. So you're like, you know, you take that little bit of advice and you know, somebody just giving you compliments doesn't necessarily help, you know, that's like, okay, I, I guess I'm in the right track or whatever, but that's not necessarily true either. I think you just need to know, and that makes it so different, like everybody's different, so that's why I, I guess some people are geniuses and other people will become that talented or whatever it is. But I think advice comes at you and you just need to know which parts of that advice makes sense mm -hmm. and what doesn't make sense. And I would even avoid trying to prove your point with opinions and like, get into an argument or like, you just gotta be open and then you gotta know, you know, like just cause somebody comes and says, oh, I don't know what that symbolism is there. They don't, they, they're only looking at this one little piece of you, you know? And you know, we, as an artist, you got this big thing and you're, try, you're trying to figure it out too, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just think you need to know when that information's coming 
value all of it and discount, discount all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you just need to know yeah. which pieces make sense to you, and then and then the rest. Then you come into the, yeah. you know, whether how you see the world and how you feel about things, and whether you have the abilities or whether you don't. You know, mm -hmm. that's all something else. You know, so I don't know. I think you just got to stay open to information, but you better know where you're going, otherwise you're just like wishy-washy, then all of a sudden you take out symbolism because your professor says, you know, sy symbolism is out, or like, yeah. what does that triangle mean or something? Yeah. Like, you know? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have something to add to that, which is, you hear a lot of, you need to do this, you have to do this if you want to make it in this field. And sometimes that is um, great feedback and great suggestions. But there's not just one path. You don't have to follow someone else's path. You make your own path. You, um, you make the opportunities that you seek. And you can take some of it as suggestion. But ultimately, there's not one way to be an artist for each of us. It would be anything. Yeah. We're yeah. yeah. Not just one way to be an artist, but it might be successful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You need to know how to apply. Suggestions are ideas, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you just need to decide which ideas make sense for what you're doing, yeah. yes. and avoid Culture. avoid ideas of that are like actual conflicts, you know. Mm -hmm. when whatever your feeling is inside, yeah. if it feels like a conflict, or somebody's putting something on you, and you're, they're being argumentative, or you're being argumentative, you need to get away from that person in regard, at least in regard to what the work is, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you should have people that just support you either. But it's nice to have some of those around. <laughs> but, <laughs> sure. you know. um, I think that in regards to like, w in worst advice, I guess, depends on like what, what your goal is. And so like in academia, we tell students to explore, 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 and you should keep exploring because otherwise you'll get bored in your career. Um, but then if you explore too much, then the galleries won't be able to recognize your shtick, your, your style. Um, so it's a, a decision that you have to make about how you, what kind of life, you, creative life you want to lead and business-wise how drastically you can shift and change your practice. Or if you do it more slowly, it's more accepted by the art world, it tends to be, um, if they can follow your trajectory better. Um, but like I have urges to just like totally become a totally different artist when I make work and then something tells me let's let's go a little bit more gradually because I am aware of the market all the time. Yeah, and then I was talking about that and saying if you look at Picasso's work and it changed over his whole life mm -hmm. so much, every piece of work, you know, there's the blue period, there's the sculptures, there's so many, but we all yeah. see his work and we all say we know that's Picasso. So no matter how you do your work, you can we'll always you see you in Yes, that's very true. So true. you can, as you say, maybe gradually though, because I mean, if you did something like totally radically different straight away, <laughs> that would be hard to recognise. But over your whole period of your art, people will still people say that that's, that's you. True. They'll see those elements. Because mm -hmm. we, we actually revisit things quite a lot as mm -hmm. artists, and you have these sort of things, and you think you're doing something differently, but you're actually revisiting it, but in another way. Right, and yeah. find a gallery that will be okay if you are interested in exhibiting, not that everybody mm -hmm. has to, that is okay with you shifting your work yeah. and stay, stay you, true to yourself. Because I had a gallery that was yeah. making me make the same painting over really? and over again, and it didn't work out. And luckily, my new gallery is supportive of me experimenting, That's so it, it feels yeah. very free. Yeah. yeah. We have very similar things when I'm a writer. Hi. Um, <laughs> 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 but we. Um, you know, if you're in a writing workshop and you have 20 people around you and they're all giving you feedback at all times, you have 30 different opinions that you have to sift through. Mm -hmm. And I've also I've had many writers tell me that that's a fault with academia and that's a fault with MFA programs because you need to develop your own specific voice before you can hear that criticism mm -hmm. and take it and know exactly like what to take and what to throw away. So. I mean, I think it would usually be relate to the work that you're doing. Like, as soon as I say to you, oh, you should be doing, you know, I might say you should do that bigger. You know, wow, if you made that bigger, it'd be great or something. But I think it's specific to, like, telling somebody how to paint or how, what they should be doing is like me saying to you, you need to be more like this if you, you know. And that's like etiquette school. That's something different, you know. 
So I'm going to pause the video right here because I noticed it's going to start talking about a little bit some of the other things that is actually going to be mentioned in part two of episode four. So in part two of episode four, that's where we'll have a little bit more of the individual interviews put in alongside the roundtable discussions because a lot of what was everybody was saying was fairly similar to when I was interviewing them individually. Ha <laughs> ha